We're back. Morning. So, engine room. Yeah, I thought we'd do something nice for a change instead of talking. <laughs> Good, yeah, slagged off for that a lot. <laughs> so, Lamborghini cylinder head. And bits to go in it. Lots of bits. So, smash through the intro bit, Dav, and we'll see you on the other side. It's a Tuesday, and we're doing a Friday video. Mate, I can't keep up anymore. Can't keep up, so it's all good. So we've got a Lamborghini head to put together, because I think we've showed stripping them on the bench, but we haven't shown how we put them together. So apart from the fact that it takes me longer to lay everything out than it does to put it together, we thought we'd uh, walk you through what we do. So we've got to put the spring seats so the valve stem seals goes on the top of the guide, then the spring seat goes in, then the spring goes in, then the retainer goes in, and then that obviously all goes over the top of that. Bosh. Pretty much bosh. So what we'll do is we need to put the spring seats on first and then the valve stem seals. So we'll protect the face of the head because it's been skimmed. So I just use silicon tube make sure there's nothing on them but a bit of silicon tube we always assemble a head or i always assemble and strip a head inlet towards okay so then it doesn't if i strip a head and i lay it out like that i always know then because it's inlet towards which cylinders which i never get it wrong so yeah. I don't you don't flip it around so if you want to do any work on the exhaust you flip it over, don't turn it round and around, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah? So, first things first is I just use one of these. Yeah? Ten spring seats. Three, four, five, six. Ten. And I literally just like that. Should I do it that one? that one like so drop right. it in and drop it in so the only thing you've got to watch for which I'll do it first is this why we have an airline as well heads are cleaned they've been chemical cleaned but sometimes what you get is if I pinch another pick I want that one you get as you've pulled the stem seal out, the guide just pulls the lip of the seal off. So you just gotta make sure you got all those out. Okay. So we'll double check that before we put the next ones on. That's got a spring seat, that hasn't. Let me get that one off first because it's... Now, normally, this would all be off before I brought it in here. Yeah. But if I do everything perfect, then you lot have nothing to watch. <laughs> so what was the deal with this engine then? Did this come in? So in this is a... just race engine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so this is just refresh. So uh, original pistons and rods, but we changed uh, rings, rod bearings, rod bolts, main bearings, uh, we put a complete valve train in it because average RPM of a GT3 engine is very high. Yeah. Um, and we we don't know the history of this one, so I've just said to them, look, pistons and rods look mint, but let's put a valve train in it. So yeah, we've yeah. got brand new valves, brand new pistons, uh, brand new springs, which are even if we don't do valves, we always do springs. Um, because uh, stock engines can, I've seen broken springs anyway. So we do, um, we change the springs on everything. Yeah. Um, I've, st I've recently stripped the McLaren engine. Uh, I think I showed it in one video, didn't, it? didn't we? Where it had a broken, where it's got a broken spring. Yeah, we looked at that. Um, 
course with these you could just go to Audi and buy brand new springs or go to Lamborghini and buy brand new springs but with the McLarens no chance it's tricky yes so as Mr uh, Tavares is going to discover I know that was um, that was an interesting conversation with him. It was. So, if any of you don't haven't watched that, he's the chap on YouTube who bought the P1 that got caught in a hurricane flood. So, he's got some long sleepless nights ahead of him. But but the car was mint, wasn't it? Before he got it, yeah, yeah, done 300, like no miles. 300 miles. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was immaculate. So, yeah, what the what the guide has pulled off here is, can you see the ribs on the inside? Let's just focus on that, yeah. So as you've pulled them off, obviously it's like a lip on the edge of the guide that pushes down over these ribs. And as, you, as we've pulled the seals off, it's torn the, um, it's torn those little lips out of the inside of the seal. So they always, they always do it when they come off. It's part of the retention mechanism that holds the seals onto the guides because yeah. otherwise they just, if you had nothing sort of holding them on, you'd have nothing keeping them on. You just got to make sure you, you get them all. And then, yeah, we just, you know, you end up with lots of these little rings look like this one. This is a particularly bad one. You end up with big chunks of there we go. Sort of seal hanging around. But we don't want those rattling around in there. So. so do you ever see the cars that these GT engines go back into or are they just no, straight we need off? To, yeah, so normally we we're just the engine guys and then the, the race team sort of look after the mechanical side themselves. Yeah. So we'll tell them how we want our engines run in, um, which is fine, but yeah, we kind of live in that realm where no news is good news. Yeah. Um, well, I suppose you only hear about things when there's an issue. Yeah, I mean, even down to we don't like don't <laughs> they don't even update us on how they're doing, so we have to go looking for the results to see how we're doing. So, like we've won British Championships, uh, we've got stuff competing in uh, for World Endurance teams. So yeah, it's pretty good. Obviously, the factory stuff is never us, but yeah, you know less in years gone by but privateer stuff we do pro-am gt pro so it's all good it's getting there now we just need to buy one mate <laughs> let's sell the uh let's sell your diesel and you can commute in a road converted lms car or something. <laughs> yeah so just double check my torch How did we survive before iPhones? I know, it does everything. Yeah. Never understood why people, you're like, what do you want to buy a watch for as well? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So. Well, so you can have it next to the steering wheel of your, uh, your Ferrari. Yeah. On Insta. Now, I have a special tool for pushing valve stem seals in. You've got a special tool? Yeah, but it's rubbish. Another one. It's, but it's rubbish. Right. All right. So it wants to force the spring back. It doesn't sit in there nice. So I never use that. Okay. How do you tool that? So what I use is, I use a double hex socket that doesn't touch the seal. Yeah. It just touches on the edge. Yeah, so I use a double hex. So it's sort of like the roundest like you can get, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so I just use that. And then a little extension. And then, I use assembly lube, so let me grab oh. my lubing. We don't go in dry in this establishment, David. Fair enough, mate. And we literally just a little bit on the inside of the seal. Yeah. Line it up. I do that one now. I don't know why I did this one again. Yeah. Show you. So, just got it lined up, sit it on the top, make sure it's square, and push it down till it stops. And there we go. Yeah. 
Um, so there's no force involved with that. That's literally no, nope, just push. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I tell you now, they're a nightmare to get off. So um, we use a little bit of grease pushing them on. One because it uh, removes that sort of stiction where you think is is fully seated. Um, but two, then it also doesn't damage the little ribs inside them that are part of the retention mechanism holding it on. Yeah. Um, so you don't need a hammer. If you haven't got to smash them. Literally, if it's not going on right, something's wrong. Um, so yeah, you could put them on dry if you want, but I don't like the feeling of them going on. So they ain't coming off. Yeah, and if you've ever got to take them back, take them off, because I have before, I've forgotten to put the spring seats on first. Yeah. Because once the split, once this valve stem seal's on, you can't get spring seats on. Right. Uh, and I've done it before. I've literally pushed them on like that and then gone, oh, shh. I forgot to put the spring seats on, which is why I lay everything out like that. Yeah. So I can see what I've got. Um, I've had the spring seats sat over on, on the tool, done this, pushed them all on, and then gone, oh, bloody hell, I've left them off. And then I've gone to take all the valve stem seals off and I've knackered them, taken them off. Right. And they're £10 each. Yeah. So... Um, like a lot of things with this, you, you make that mistake once and that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is why I don't lay everything out to make it look pretty. That's a byproduct. I lay everything out so that I've got full visibility over the parts I've got. Yeah. Everything's clean. I know I've got the right quantities. Where is if, if everything was just in a big bucket, you, you know, you take it out of the parts washer and you chuck it in a bucket and right, and you've got one missing when you come to assemble it. Is it still in the bottom of the parts washer? Is it yeah. knocked on the floor? Did you not take it out of the engine? Because when you strip these heads, those spring seats are a nightmare to get out. Because they've got oil under them. They don't want to They don't want to come out of the head. Yeah. So if you put the head in a hot wash and turn it upside down and leave it running long enough, they'll all fall out and get washed into the bottom of the oil tank, <laughs> into the bottom of the wash tank. So then you, you've got to keep on top of where you've left everything yeah yeah or where everything is so that's sort of like your attention to detail on strip down so so what other work was done on this engine uh just a clean and a refresh mate yeah okay yeah or so literally strip the bits measure everything up make sure everything's in good order um, clean everything, uh, replace parts that are part of the refresh schedule, so chains, guides, bearings, springs, then like I said in this one we've put valves in it as well, um, give everything a bloody good clean in because it gets f filthy. Yeah. You know, how, how often are these rebuilt in the uh, series? So, it's done, on, it it's done on it's done yeah it's done on kilometers yeah so really every well you can stretch out the older ones where every seven and a half thousand kilometers the okay. later ones are ten ten thousand kilometers yeah um but a lot of our teams sort of run two engines in cycle and then we sort of see them every five thousand kilometers yeah um because a refresh is a damn sight cheaper than a broken engine. Yeah, yeah. And again, it's that preventative maintenance yeah, that we talk it. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. So when they start coming out of sort of factory level, like the McLaren stuff, when the, when the factory were looking after them, or when they were factory teams, they didn't refresh the heads. Right. They took the heads off and put new heads on. Okay. Um, because it was so much cheaper for them to just unbolt one and bolt a new head on. Whereas now, we don't have that luxury because they're what, nearly 10 grand a head. So now we've got to service the heads. The problem then starts to come in, it's hard to find parts. Yeah. It's hard to get parts, so. Yes, last two.
So the metal cage down the side can take quite a bit of abuse. You're always trying to protect the green seal on the top and the rubber spring and the rubber, sorry, the green seal on the top and the metal spring. And it's the spring that keeps the tension yeah. on the valve on the valve stem. And then obviously what you, when you start to get leaking valve stem seals, it's normally because the quality or the integrity of the sort of rubber on the top of the seal, they go quite plasticky. So then they can't grip the valve. Yeah. And that's age, um, lubrication. So if you've got poor oil in it, you know, at the end of the day, oil goes down the guides to keep lubricating the guides. Um, so yeah, you, you know, it is, it is important. What, um, what oil do the guys use with this? Uh, 300V. Yeah. So that's what we tell them to use. Yeah, it's 300V. So. Um, so head's been skimmed, seats have been cut uh, for the new valves. You see they've been skimmed across the top. Seats yeah. have been cut, then obviously sort of chemical dip to get rid of all the carbon build up and nastiness in the ports. It looks mint. So we're back to square one. Yeah. Do you want to smell my uh, lube, mate? Or is this that uh, Christmas lube? Cinnamon. It smells of cinnamon. Smell my finger. Ten of it. Smell my cheese. Yeah. So we just lube the stems up with assembly lube. Should fall in. No, should fall in nice, and then you'll feel a bit of resistance at the seal, and then push through. If you get any resistance, anything, then stop yep. and look. So what can happen sometimes is the um, the cotters can pinch on the grooves. Um, you're getting a valve and shape. So cotters pinch on the groove and put a tiny little burr at the top. And as you try to pull it out, it pinches it, it binds in a guide. Yep. So that's one way when it's coming apart. Then when it's going back together, especially if you've ported a head and you've like nipped the top of the guide with your porting tool, you go to put the valve in and it binds. So it should feel silky smooth, like literally silky smooth. And that's just dropping yeah. in there and it was only... And then even then when I push through the seal, it feels silky smooth. Yeah. All right. So. So just make sure some people pe some people use paste or assembly grease like our blue grease over there. I've always just used bird lube. So you um you arrived with the new Lamborghini V12 in the back of your van the other day. I did. Which I think we showed in the, the catch up video. Yeah. When are we going to take a look at that? I have got to get this finished. Yep. The RS3 finished. And um, I need to button off the two McLarens before I'm starting any more <laughs> engines. Yeah. So once I've got those done, which is not far away, um, we will. Um, have a look at that. Have a look at that, yeah. So otherwise I just end up with engines sat everywhere, so to speak. I think um, Matt started his motion logo, didn't he? Yeah, he got it running. Yeah. Yes, he did. So I think we made a little cameo in that as well, didn't we? You said he did. You're not in it? I was hiding in the background. Oh, mate. Were you staring at the uh, dog's chew toy? <laughs> the doggy special toy. Mate. <laughs> it was huge. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oh, uh, see? I'm talking. What have I done? Oh. I have spring seats off. Okay. On the exhaust. Mate. That, that is how important this is. Yep. How many heads have I built and you can still cock up? Yeah. Because you take your eye off the ball. So, yeah, lesson to everybody. Mistake rectified. Good job I got spares. So, rule one of building engines, don't stand and chat while you're building engines, because... Don't let the videographer no, ask you questions constantly either. easy to make silly mistakes. And again, if I didn't have them, if I didn't have that all laid out, at what point do I, because I've obviously forgotten to put them in and they're staring me in the face, yeah. when they're not sat there, at what point do I remember, shit, I've left them out. So, easy to do, concentrate, don't do your YouTube in while you're building engines. <laughs> so, that is all of them uh, back in. Lovely. All right, so we have new springs, painted marks at the top, and then we're literally just going to just neatly set them on, and then we'll transfer the complete head to the bench. Oh. See, dropping stuff now, mate. One, two, three. So the spring seat is there to stop. The spring rotates while the engine's turning. The spring right. will turn. Um, if it's an aluminium head and a steel spring, so they can wear. You can wear a groove into the head. So we do a lot of retrofitting or a lot of, um, we make our own seat shims on some engines Yeah. Um, to stop or to, to try and help the, um, it wearing a groove in the head. So like Evos were pretty bad for it. I have a fancy knife somewhere. Right, I'm gonna have to just rip it, I think. So, it's a freshly skimmed head, and I do trust my tool, but I'm just going to sit it on a tissue to do the work. So, ooh, ooh. so I'm literally just going to sit it like that, like that. So now I can sit the complete head on the workstation. Yep. Because, especially as we're starting to set it up, there's some movement involved. So, I need to line up under the groove underneath, which is right, that's fine, um, to be, so that the, the holding tool can get on all of the um, valves. And then we've got some pins here the locket and I think I need to come this one in. There we go. Like so. So now it won't move backwards, it's sat against these pins. Yep. So now we bring our stanchions in. Yeah, and I'm gonna come off from the Cambridge, like so. Just gonna lock it up, like so. Like so. Send me on this side. Right. 
for the best. Right, so we will do, I think that's the best tool. It's too big. That's too big. So, not going to move. We tilt it so our exhaust lower cord like so. Go this way. Put a stop on. So we've got a bit of we've got a bit of float there. Uh, I've got my pedal and I've got some collets. So underneath but when you press the pedal the foot comes up and holds the bottom of the valve yeah so what we're going to do is we're just going to set it up a minute so that's about as far as I would want to go set our stop it's just a case of installing all our little cars so let me just get them out of it count them out The fiddly bit. Yeah. And I still haven't worked out the best way to kind of do it, really. So. Just give that last final clean off and degrease. Because once we've washed them, we normally spray them in like um, like uh, motor maintenance spray. Yeah. Just to stop them. Rust in really, because that's the other thing you sort of battle. Right, let's figure out what the best way to do these first two is. So you either sit them in the top. We'll try it in the top first. Right. So if I like put that there, screw that. So you can either sit them in the top like this. All right. and hope <laughs> that as you push the valve down, oh, see what I mean, mate? Yeah, so you can have a sitting in the top like, so, it's mate, in there. doesn't get easier. Tweezers, ev tried everything. Yeah, so we can have a try it like this and we'll see how we do. Sometimes this way works. And then as it pushes the valve free, they kind of part. Yeah. And then you just gotta finger them. Yeah. Um, so nice and gently. Yeah. No, that's not gonna have any here. Right, so we go all the way to the bottom. And use our little screwdriver. It's magnetic and always causes problems. It's got one in, and I think it's going to be a case of doing it like this. It's be heart surgeon, mate. Yeah. 
Welsh Nuts Coal. I've had him. I'd have had him back to work in days, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so literally, if you come in here, you see I've both got them sat in a valve. This, this is going to be today's trick: is getting them sat in a valve, not the way I was talking about. So they're sat in a valve, yeah. Did we just didn't get to focus on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if I took my screwdrivers out of the way, that easier. There you go. And as I slowly bring it about, let me just. Let me change the focus mode. Bear with me, caller. Please hold the line. Right, so you can see I've got the spring compressed and then I've essentially got the two collets, yeah, on the valve stem yeah. with the retainer sat below. So if you come and watch now and I back the pedal off, hopefully, nice and gently. Like so. Nice. Easy when you know how. Yep. Right, four, 39 more to go, mate. <laughs> We want we're through this bit. Yeah, I do. So again, just gently, gently. Like so. Take two more. Insert in hole. Of repeat. Rinse and repeat. I'm gonna have to get a set of long handles. Um, tweezers, I think. Fine pointy tweezers, because the ones I've got are a bit cumbersome. Because what happens is if you if you catch, because it's a triple groove, like on a single groove, it's easier. But you basically you can't catch the bottom groove of the of the bloody collet. Yeah. If you catch it on like the second groove of the valve, you just battle that. If that makes sense, because you you're trying to get it's not smooth. It's not going to fall in one sure. one hole. So the bottom. This is like the teeth scene out of Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> right. So like that. When you've got it, it goes. So then the other way to do it is this. Dab your screwdriver in a bit of grease. Yeah. Hold it like this. And then. Like so. Done. Right, grease is the answer. Yep. See? Nothing comes from going in dry. <laughs> Nothing good comes from going in dry. <laughs> so. And the reason magnets are rubbish is because you can never withdraw the tool. Yeah. So you want demagnetized. Demagnetized tools, really. Oh, you passed it, like that. There we go. Dabbling. One is in. Two. Lovely. Like so. 
Rinse and repeat. <laughs> I like that. It's um. Do you watch that M five three nine, the BMW guy? Uh. No. You not watch that? I go and go and have a look. Oh right? no, no, I did. Yeah. You mentioned it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mate, it's the he's, German channel. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Mate, he's hilarious. He's hilarious. So he um. He buys knackered BMWs. Yeah. So, what, all of them? Mate, like, they're all rubbish, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> That's going to upset some people. Hey. Um, what would you have? What M would I have? Yeah, BMWs. M2s. M2s oh, mate, right. I would love an old, um, an old M5. The, the V8. Ah, oh, the V8 the, one. The the four first, litre V8. Right. Okay, the, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't the, wasn't the first one, but it was the E. Um, it's not E39. Ah, uh, it was E39, yeah. Was it? Yeah, the E46 was the, the M3. M3. Look at me knowing BMW. Yeah. Um, E28 as well, one of those. 222. I like those. Yeah. Uh, V10 M5. Yep. Yeah, quite cool. Um, but yeah, if you don't watch his channel, go and um, go and check him out. So anyway, he just does. Oh, I, I can't. I will watch them all. I've yeah. Watched, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I watch him do loads. And he'll basically go and buy absolutely knackered BMWs and put them back on the road, and he just changes everything. And just films it all. Proper preventive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the best thing is when he like hurts himself. <laughs> he. Um, <laughs> Like like us, obviously, because we don't really show us working on cars, so to speak. It's normally components off cars, isn't it? Really, we don't do much. Yeah. You you know, I'm not doing brakes or something or stuff like that, which you know, I suppose we could do. But he'll like go to undo a suspension bolt, bang his arm, and go ow, <laughs> and then go. I mean, ow. <laughs> <laughs> and it, oh mate. So like you, you know, you're lying in bed watching watching YouTube. And I had it on, and Kate sat next to me reading, and he does it, and like she sat next to me pissing herself because it's just you don't expect it. <laughs> but I'm completely obsessed. Yeah. With it at a minute, yeah, completely obsessed with it. It's such a good channel. We'll uh, we'll stick a link in yeah. in the description. Yeah, he's um, uh, I don't know whether he's got any experience. He certainly seems to be. It's he behaves like he's an ex BMW Master Tech. He yeah. knows the cars inside out. Yeah. Um, but his um, attention to detail, yeah, is, is brilliant. So yeah, give him a M M five M five three nine restorations. I think he is. Check it out. So yeah, very very good, mate. Really enjoy it. Really enjoy it. But Well, you've watched me do seven. Yeah, should we, uh... <laughs> you could do the, uh... Should we fast forward? Bling, 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 bling. Yeah. Fast forward bit, yeah. yeah. Right. But no music. Uh, no, no one likes music. Either that or no one likes your taste in music. <laughs> Well, there's a question for the viewers then. If you, um, if we are going to speed up a section of the video, what sort of what, music would you? What like? do you want to listen to? Because um, I, I can't afford the rights to Slipknot, which is what I have. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be something from our royalty-free music library, or <laughs> would people rather just listen to us talk nonsense and? Yeah, because we do that very well. So the Scirocco's gone, or it's going. Right, okay. So basically uh, an R8 client of mine who's got to drop his car off, did some brilliant man maths. Yeah. And went, well, we're looking for a car, and um, by the time I've taken the price of train tickets off, <laughs> the price of your Scirocco, it just makes sense to buy a Scirocco. <laughs> so he's basically dropping his car off and then using the Scirocco to go home. Okay. Are they just going to keep it, or are you going to say? Uh, no, no, I think he's going to. Yeah, yeah, yep. I think he's going to keep it. Is, is it cool. going with the track tires? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So let's go with tra- let's go with the Derezas on. Um, so we got a few little bits left to do on the RS six. Yeah. So we need to have a think. What we need to try and find next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've I've been looking at a few on eBay and various places. So I think we'll find something interesting. Yeah, I... People seem to like an RS Audi. Yeah. You know. You almost want something that needs a bit of a bit of love and a bit of attention. Yeah. Or yeah, you know, it's been. I don't want a rust bucket because I've got one of them already. <laughs> yeah, that, that's for another video. Yeah. Sorry, right, I'll fix it. Thermite plasma gets rid of rust. <laughs> <laughs> so. Be fine. You can when it's done. Well, hang on. Did didn't you uh, almost buy a TT when we were up at Matt's well, place? Well, yeah, I did message him about that, and yeah. I hadn't heard anything else. So, okay. you know, the thing is, there is it's not necessarily his, is it? It's um, to do with um, Mallory. Yeah, yeah. So, right. Well, there, another question for the viewers then in the comments. Let us know what you think. What... Anyone know where there's a cheap RS two? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. How much are they worth now? RS2s are big money, aren't they? Are they? Yeah. Yeah. Done the RS5 thing. Quite nice to get an S2. You could find one of those. Yeah. We've kind of done the RS. Well, I've done an RS5, alright. We didn't really document it too much. No. Kind of done an RS5. What about a B5 RS4? If I would get, yeah, it's got to be, we've got to go, we got to go on, haven't we? Mate, like, I saw one of those the other day, drove by me, and it was, I think it was Avis Blue, it was lowered, and it just sounded amazing. Absolutely ripped past me. Like a work, like maybe um, a very, very, uh, the, uh, the um, C, C5 RS6. Yeah, 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 the, um, the car out of Lair Cake. Yeah. Yeah, I always love those. Oh yeah, yeah, of course it would, isn't it? Yeah. Right, so now, my limit stop is wrong, so we need to readjust it. I think a lot of this is because everything's going smaller capacity, hybrid, yeah. electric. These big V8 beasts, people are getting into them now while they can. Yeah. See if I can juggle it this side. If not, we'll flip the head round. Yeah. Sometimes it is a bit easier. Yeah, like I haven't got quarter of a million quid to do an old Lambo, so that's out. Yep. Um, and I don't think many people will be too interested by it, but I think I like I like bringing stuff. I like putting cars back on the road. Yeah. You know that RS six was quite satisfying because a lot of people had had a go at it and it wasn't necessarily complicated to do. Yeah, um, it just needed to be done the right way and have the time and the... Yeah, yeah, and sort of, you know... The experience to do it. And it is a it is a lovely car. Though. Yeah. The guy who's getting that is... He's going to be happy with that. Yeah. yeah. It's funny because just as we were talking about that, I saw Harry's garage. He, yeah, he, do a video on RS6s. Yeah. Like that, oosh, I'm a trendster. He must have watched my video, Dav, and got our video and gone, oh, we do one on RS6. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I bet he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but. It'd be quite cool to do something with him. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll reach out and see. Yeah, I know him indirectly because of, obviously, the Evo magazine link when we were doing oh, stuff Oh, of course, yeah, so yeah. Never really dealt with him. Again, another thing for the comments. Any other YouTubers that you think we should collaborate with? Yeah, who's um I'm trying to think like it's it's hard, isn't it? Because you go on YouTube and it's it's actually hard to find new stuff because it shows you what you're into. Well, yeah, what you've looked at previously. Yeah. yeah, damn the algorithm. I know.
this side seems a little bit easier than the other side. Well, that's good. It'll be time for a tea break in a minute. Nearly. Get these finished and then... Uh, And you get all excited because you're like, I've done, I've got a head finished. And you're like, yep, same again, mate. <laughs> so I think between, uh, what have I got? McLaren, two, two McLaren engines. So what are they, 40? Yeah, yep. 260 valves. No, hang on. Yeah. 32s. Oh, crap, went in there. Uh, two thirty-two sixty-four. Right. Roll. Aha. <laughs> well, the battery's running low as well now. Is it? Yeah. Nearly there. Race to the finish. I dropped the retainer down in my groove, but I'll get that out in a minute. Okay. It's got your uh, track day coming up soon as well. 11th of May. Yeah. My. Yeah. So, thank God it all sold out. Otherwise, I would have lost a load of money. <laughs> So yeah, it's done quite well this year. Yeah. Saw that quite early. It'd be good. Um, so I think there's quite a few different bits and pieces coming as well, so. Yeah, should make for a good video. Hmm. Four. need a bench, I think. I need a little, one of my black trolleys in here. Yeah. This is annoying me walking back and forth to these bits. Yeah, that'll make it easier. But, nearly in it. One. It's good, when you've got a machine set, like the limit stop set, you, you know, and you've got it lined up right, it's literally just, you get yourself into a routine and then the falls out. All that happens. Yeah, you can get yourself into a. Into a groove, as they say. A, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> get it? Hey? I gotta put a collet in a groove. <laughs> hey, mate, that bloody Tavrish video, it, which should be out by now, yep. I didn't even notice I made a shocking pun on the battery. <laughs> didn't even know. <laughs> So what did you, how did you do this before you had the fancy machine? Uh, I had like a bar that you bolted to the top of the head yeah. and a lever. I think we to, might have shown that yeah, in the previous video. It is a fact, it is uh, an to it, but you've kind of got to pin the head down with your elbow. Yeah. Um, and then you've got a special like loader where you load the two collets in, or keepers. Um, and then you, Lever it, lever on the valve, on the valve to open the valve. Yeah. Um. And then pull like a pin out of the back of this tool that releases the keepers, and it either works or it doesn't. There's no like. Whereas this, it takes away the. Uh, Four leg is trying to retain the valve, trying to retain the pressure on the valve. Sure. Like you wouldn't, but we could go off and have a cup of tea now, and that valve's compressed yeah. and perfectly yeah. safe. Um, so. I suppose that's the other thing that, that springs to mind with this is once you. Hey, you hey, don't hey, again, mate. Springs to like mind. I do. <laughs> you um, spot the pun. You get involved, and you see it through to the end. That particular part of the process. 
Yeah. Because if you nipped off to do something else now, onto the phone, see a client, I'd, whatever. Um, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like at the minute. The and just as we talk about that, the battery dies. And we're back. We're back. I know. Lost the power. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, uh, I can't remember what we started to say now. Uh, getting into getting into the flow of it or getting, yeah. doing, getting it disturbed, done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I would say even more so this year, not that I've been forgetful, but these first three months have probably been the most challenging um, three months since since I've been in business. Yeah. Um, for one big reason, um, he's, he's back now, but you, you know, you always know the value of your staff, but uh, like me and Mitch were just like, mad here yeah you know and i've got my own work to do like stuff like this yes the boys can do bits and pieces but there's also there's daily customer work to do there's you know dino work to do there's project work to do yeah um, trying to fit this in and then there's then there's engines you know and on top of that like to you, Kate just popped in now. There's a guy popped down for me to have a little drive of his R8 because he's got a problem. You know, I can come in of the morning, be here for half eight, and not get onto any work till home time. Yeah. You know, so like last night, and it, this isn't me with my violin out, so don't, don't you, you know, I choose this life, I choose this. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like last night, I left, I picked Jack up from football, my middle. Um, yeah, picked him up from football, dropped him off at home and come back to work because I hadn't done what I needed to get done. Yeah. Um, uh, and I was back here till nine. I'm up, you, you know, get up in the morning and this is, this is the life of a sort of business owner. And so I can get on with work as soon as I get in. I'll get up. And go downstairs and the kids are eating breakfast and I'm doing, I've got, to, I'll do emails. Yeah. You know, and it's, so yeah, losing, losing car, especially as we've got popular, we've got bigger, you know, people want to use our services. So at the minute now we're booking for start of June. So what is it? Middle of April. Yeah. You know, and that's not good enough. I, I really hate having that kind of lead time because we can't help people. If they need help, yes, we can do schedule this or schedule that but if anyone rings today now and is like rick i need your help yeah you know we would struggle so which is why we were looking for someone else to come on but that is still ongoing this is always the bloody fiddly one so again if you know somebody who fits the bill yeah i mean i think I've, i'm chatting to someone at the minute so i know their history all done sorted yes um but yeah, so if you're contacting us, you, you know, because this is this is the episode as well, it's like Instagram, Facebook, personal Facebook, people don't get an answer, or people just come to me on my personal Facebook and message. Yeah. My mobile, my phone. YouTube. Uh, my mobile, yeah, there's so many contact yeah. methods. It's hard to keep track of everything, Yeah, isn't yeah, it? so I tell everybody, email me. Email is the most reliable system I deal with. It's my things to-do list. Like right now we're chatting, my phone's ringing in my back pocket. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it is, it is kicking our ass a bit at the minute, so bear with us, you know, and we'll do everything we can to, to sort you out, but, you know, Carl's back now, so a degree of normality is coming. Well, um, as normal as it gets with Carl. Yeah, pretty much. Good old grumps. <laughs> um, so, yeah. We is getting there. That, mate, is a head belt. Woo! What have I done there? Is that one so far out? Yeah, it's all right, that Lovely job. So, then before we put the roller rockers on, we use this um, high pressure grease. So, I'll show you what we do. So, um, I can go back over there. So, this is extreme pressure grease. So, before we put the roller rocker on, yeah. we use what one? Can you see that one? Hang on, let's come around this way. This one? Yeah, that way. Yeah. 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 So we use a special grease. We literally put a dab of it on the top like that. Yep. So when the rocker goes on, 
it's got some very good lubrication there before the oil sort of comes around. Okay. Um, but that is a V10 built. That's a wrap. Oh, bloody hell. Right. That is tea time, mate. Okay. So that's how we do it. Now, what we would do after this then is leave them in here until they're ready to go on the engine. They go on the engine. So obviously put them on. On a Gen 1, you could build the cams up, not that you'd want to, but on a Gen 1, you could put the cams in and the cams have cutouts in the camshafts to get on the head bolts. On a Gen 2, you can't do it, or Hurricane, you can't do it. You have to put the heads on with no cams in. Yeah. Then you put the cams in, then you put the cam bridge on, then you can put timing covers and a rocker cover on. So when the bottom end is ready, we would lift the heads on, both heads on, torque both heads down, and then build them up with camshafts. So the thing to look out for in the cams, these are really clean, uh, is that they feel super smooth. There's no sort of um, uh, rotational grooves where there's been debris in the oil. So you see some of them where they've picked up. We have got a cam home to clean anything up. Yeah. We just want them nice and clean. Then when the cams go in, um, we put assembly lube on the cams, yeah. We put extreme pressure grease on the tip of the, on the stem of the valve, uh, on the tip of the valve. We put uh, build lube down the bores for the tappets. And then we put assembly grease on the roller on the rocker arm. Yeah. So, on, so as the cam comes round, and then we plaster assembly grease on the camshaft as well. So you've got lots and lots and lots of lubrication on those parts that aren't, because the, remember the, the valve, the tip, the rocket, it's all splash fed. So when you're just cranking it over, trying to get pressure, yeah, you're putting pressure on a cap, you're putting oil on the cans, but you're not splash feeding it over everything else. So we literally go crazy with additional lubrication in the heads to do that. Then our running instructions, depending on what it is, is fill it up with like 8100 Motor, which is just a fully synthetic oil. Three heat cycles, so you just start it up, Put the engine in, fill it with fluids, take the crank sensor off, crank it four or five times till you get oil pressure. We would sometimes, if we were doing it and it was a brand new build, we'd put oil pressure gauge in the back of the head and we'd watch the gauge off this port here, mate, if you come in. So we'd go off the head with a gauge mm -hmm. and measure the oil pressure, yeah, uh, to make sure we've got oil pressure in the engine before we even start to fire it up. Yeah. Because of course, when it's cranking, it's like, what, 100 RPM. When it fires, it instantly jumps to, on cold start, 1500. So we would make sure we had oil pressure before we even plug the crank sense back in. Yeah. Then we'd fire it up and we'd sit there and let it idle, don't rev it. Sit there, let it idle, and let the oil temp come all the way up to, up to 100 degrees, which is what an R8 or Hurricane would run. Uh, on say an RS3, it's slightly lower, maybe 85, 90. Get it all, all the way up to operating temperature, switch it off, let it go cold, and do that three times. So you go through a heat cycle three times. Um, then we would say, completely dump the fluid. On a dry sump engine, you can't do it, but on an RS3, we would dump the fluid and then take the oil pan off. And we take the oil pan off to clean the, anything at the bottom because build lube's not so bad, but this stuff, this molly grease, like that's Carilla rod bolt grease, or, ARP lube leaves like a black film in the bottom of the pan. Yeah. Yeah. So we would take on an RS3 after our three heat cycles when we know we've washed everything off the bolts, everything off the studs, we drop the pan and clean the pan out. And then you know then you're at a good starting point. On a dry sump engine, you can't do that. So you've got to dump the oil when it's stinking hot. Take every drain plug you can find off and let it drain overnight. And that gets everything out and then start again. Um, change filter. So that's how we would advise to run an engine in. Then, once you've sort of cleaned out your lubrication system, that's when you can then put it on a dyno and start doing your proper running in yeah. work. It's not like the olden days where you've got to use running in oil or run the bearings in or anything like that. Um, your clearances are set, they're not going to get any bigger. Your rings, to be honest, do most of their bite in while I'm turning it over building it. So it's not like you need to do 100 miles bedding rings in you can pretty much get it through heat cycles, you know, put a, put a decent bit of heat into it and run it on it on a dyno and then put it on a limiter. So 
we're pretty savage when we run our engines in because you need the rings to bite into the balls. You can't pussyfoot around. So, yeah. you know, find a knife, mate. Nice. Um, yeah, obviously older stuff is slightly different, but we know what we know on these. Yeah. You know, which is a guy messaged us the other day wanted us to build a 964 Porsche engine. I said, look, mate, not for us. You're better off going off to some of these and I put them in contact with some people we know. We stick to what we stick to, lad. Yeah, that's it. Narrow but deep. Yes, I like that. Hey. Tell the wife that. That's an... <laughs> <laughs> right, so, on that note. Smash the buttons. I said smash your nose, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah smash the buttons. Uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Comment below. Let us know what you think. Um, take the piss out of me because I made a cock up, but we all do it. So mistakes happen. It's making sure you've got a process in place to catch mistakes if they do happen. Absolutely. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you for a week. See you on the next one. See you next one.